it, it is another day, another moment, another opportunity that we have to share the Word of God. Good afternoon, my partners and friends. Welcome to Fire of God. It's such a pleasure to have you. You know, the last couple of weeks on the broadcast, we have seen God do some tremendous things. You know, without a shadow of a doubt, I want to say this to you, that today is your day for a breakthrough. Today is your day for a miracle. I know that it may sound, you may have heard it many, many times before that, but I want to tell you right here in this sanctuary, God is here. We just finished, I want to be honest with you, I know you're watching this on a Friday night, but we just finished, today is Sunday, we just finished a tremendous anointed service and I just had to go before you as people were ushered out and everybody left. The anointing of God is still so permeating here. I mean, I still got the sweat coming down my face. The anointing of God is here. In the next 30 minutes, I need you to grab hold of this inside your spirit. In the next 30 minutes, I need you to grab hold of what God is about to do for you. For I know that God is about to speak a word into your spirit, not into anything else, but into your spirit. Because if it is revealed in your spirit, then it will be manifested in your physical reality. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith, faith is, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It, it is the evidence of everything that we do, everything that we see, everything that we touch. And I declare that today your spirit be full of faith. You know, Jesus in Luke chapter 5, he said to Peter, Simon Peter, throw out your nets and cat, let's go fishing in other words. And Peter said one word that struck a note in the hearts of many and still strikes a note into our lives today in which he said, Lord, we've been there all night, but at thy word, I will do it. Today, God is not looking at your skill. God is not looking at your knowledge. God not, is not looking at your ability or trait. God is looking at the amount of faith that you are about to have and activate inside your life, for it is your faith that activates everything. Today, I want you to grab hold of your faith and activate it inside your spirit. I know that God is about to speak a word into your life for a, time, a word in season, a word that is about to give forth fruit. Not just any word, but a word that is about to lift you up, encourage you, and bring you to another dimension of God. If you believe it, thus you shall receive it. I want to remind you, my dear partner and friend, that even right now, right now as you're watching this, there is a toll-free number right there on your screen. I believe that as you connect with that man or woman on the other side of that phone, I believe that God is about to do something because the Bible does say that if two or three were to come together in His name, He would be there. So I want to encourage you right now to pick up that phone, dial that number. If you need somebody to pray with, somebody to come in agreement with, that phone number is available to you right away, right here, right now. Well, we're going to get into the Word right now, and I pray that even now your spirit is ready and receptive to hear what God has in store for you. Don't go anywhere. Watch this. Get your ready to faith activated, and we'll be right back. But I can tell you one thing, I know that you're in the right place uh, at the right time uh, to receive the right thing from your God. The devil thought you should have been in the hospital this week. But look at where you are tonight. The devil wanted to take your joy, but look at the smile that's on your face right now. Come on now. Listen, the devil thought, the devil thought that you were broke. The devil thought that you were out. But look at where you are today. You got a roof over your head. You got clothes on your back. You got fruit inside your belly. That means that my God has taken care of you. Hey! Are you ready tonight? Hold on a second. Uh, listen, I can't release this till you're ready. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? There's a thing. Now, let, let me say this. How many of you are here because you watch the telecast? Real quickly, let me see it. Wow, look at that. Praise God. You're here because you watch the telecast. Listen to this. If you've been watching the telecast, listen to this. We, at Fire of God, we believe that if you don't shout, there's something wrong. Some of you are getting the hang of this. Some of you are still thinking about the barbecue. 
some of you are thinking, uh, what's going on? But I said to you, if you don't shout, there's got to be something wrong. Because no matter how bad the devil gave it to you, my Jesus died on the cross, not in vain. Oh, my, 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 hey, 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 <laughs> listen, listen, the devil came at you pretty strong, but I believe you're going to get the last shout in this house here tonight. Ah. <laughs> The devil wanted to kill you. But I believe you're going to leave this house and you're going to say to the devil, is that all you got? Uh, see, the devil wanted to take your finances. But by the time you leave tonight, you're going to turn around and say to the devil, the devil's crazy. He thought he was going to take me out with that. But devil, you're going to tap. <laughs> Listen, hold on a second. You're going to have to turn around and tell the devil, devil, you're going to have to try a little bit harder than that. Uh, because my Jesus, my Jesus, oh, come on now, preach with me. My Jesus, hey, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Okay. Pastor man, he did not, listen, this is Jesus did not die on the cross simply so you could be sad. He did not die on the cross simply so you can claim defeat. <laughs> oh, man. He died. <laughs> So I could have victory. He died. So you could have a smile. He died. So you tonight. Can look past your adversity. Look past your pain. Look past your trials. Look past the circumstances. And declare. I got victory tonight. My God has given me. And you say, Pastor, are you preaching already? No, we're just getting warmed up. This is your appetizer. My dad, listen, my dad used to say to me, he said, son, he said, you can't have the meat. You can't have the main course unless you have the appetizer. But see, after the main course, something very special comes that everybody looks forward to. And it's not paying the bill. It's a thing they call dessert. <laughs> because listen, it don't matter how good the appetizer was. It don't matter how good the main course meal is. There's always reserved at the end. <laughs> Some of you are getting this now. The best is always saved for last. <laughs> See, because when you leave the restaurant, uh, you go out saying, that was a good appetizer, that was a good meal. But you go out and say, boy, that was a good dessert. Mm. I believe tonight, before you walk out of here tonight, you're going to be saying, I had a good dessert uh, inside my life. Uh, I got something inside my heart. Uh, I got something inside my spirit. Let me ask you one more time. Winnipeg, are you ready? Yeah. Hallelujah. Take your seats tonight. Open up the scripture tonight. Open up the scripture tonight. I want to minister inside your spirit. In Romans chapter 11, real quickly. Romans chapter 11. Listen, this Easter weekend, I believe, is the beginning of something new that God wants to do inside your life. Oh, Pastor, you're just saying that. No, I'm not just saying that. I believe that God is about to do something inside your spirit. In Romans chapter 11, verse 5, listen to what the promise of God says. 
This is what the promise of God says. Even so, then, at this present time, he's talking about your present. He's talking about today, not tomorrow. He's talking about right now. At this present time also, there is a remnant. Listen to this. According to the election of grace. Stop here for a second. There is a verse, there is a, this part of the scripture which I love very much that says there is a remnant. Hallelujah. Now, I said to myself, what is the definition of remnant? What is the qualification of a remnant? What is God trying to say when there is a remnant? Let me summarize it very quickly. Let me summarize it very simply. A remnant is a people willing to change and do things differently. Now more than ever, the body of Christ is compelled to do things, the same thing over and over and over. We have been taught that the same way we praised God yesterday, it's got to be the same way we've got to praise God today. While the Bible says, give God a new song. That's a remnant. Religion tells you that on Sunday morning, you got to walk into church at 10 and be out by 1045. And God forbid, should the pastor take one minute after 1045, because you ain't going to show up next Sunday morning. But a remnant tells you that when you come to praise God, the first thing you leave on the door is your watch. Religion will tell you that to praise God midweek is simply absurd and you got so much things to do. But a remnant looks forward to being in the house of God. Oh, come on now. A remnant people is a people that does not accept what the world says. Because the world cannot tell me how to praise God. Uh, the world cannot tell me uh, how to worship God. Come on now. Listen to this. The problem is, is that we've gone too fancy with our services. Uh, the problem is that we've gone too fancy with this. Uh, we've gone too fancy with that. And we simply forgot that God wants to move inside your life. And we get caught up on the lights. We get caught up on what pastor's wearing. We get caught up on the music. And we say, well, the service was okay because they didn't sing the song that I liked. Please don't get mad at me. I don't want you to get mad at me. I'm simply trying to get you to understand what a remnant is. And some people walk out of church and they say, well, pastor didn't smile at me. He didn't shake my hand. I don't know if I'll be back on midweek prayer service. But a remnant walks into church, whether it be on midweek or Sunday morning. And if pastor says, God bless you, amen. But if pastor doesn't say, God bless you, it's okay. Pastor's probably got other things on his mind. I came for one reason and one reason alone. My God says that he has got something for me. And therefore... I got to become a remnant. Amen. 